to let me hit the lottery or something because I would go in there and I would put suites up in the woods all the way down with AC and and their own personal bartender and food. I mean, I would do some some outrageous stuff. Yeah, that was it was an unfortunate thing to wreck that car, and we still don't even know why that happened, but stuff happens. You know, wrecked it on the at the big street race in Oklahoma. I was I was the guy that bought a drum of nitromethane and didn't make my house payment. You know what I mean? Because I couldn't race if I didn't have the drum of nitro. And I'm not pointing the finger at anybody, but just in general, like promoters, they all need to realize something that Put some effort into your job. Racetracks have to bank money to keep the gates open. You know what I mean? I wouldn't know what to do if there wasn't some kind of race to look forward to. I bet it's been like that since 1976. When we started doing it, I called Nick and said, you mind if I use the name More in the Woods? That's That was all Nick, not me, for sure. I knew just from the very first time I went to one of those, I was like, this is way more than money and, and parts. This is who can figure it out. Which I don't know if this is appropriate time to say that, but. Yeah, might as well. This is a good time to say it, actually. So we, we, we've purchased the track now. All right, guys. Well, welcome back uh, to the podcast. And I think I say this every time because I really like everyone that we, that sits in this other chair. But Jeff really is one of my favorite people in the world. Uh, we've become really good friends over the last couple of years. Um, so if you don't know, this is Jeff Thomas. He does so many things. He's probably most known, I would say, for putting on War in the Woods. Um, then he also has a suspension company that he does a, a ton with um, that was actually a hill climb company before it was what you – it was the same name, right? I. Uh, I put an S on the end of services when I changed it. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Big, massive change. Yeah, we'll get to that in a minute. But I just, before we get into all of it, um, I wanted to share the story of how I met Jeff. And <laughs> so, like, Brad and I got into no prep drag racing, uh, not as racers. We just, uh, there was a need at the local track to put on a race. Uh, they knew that we knew a lot of people. And that is how basically Cincy Street Nights was born. Uh, we did it prepped originally, and then we switched to no prep because that's just what was popular. And now looking back on it, I feel like that was kind of a golden age of no prep. I wish that we would have had a car back then, but that's a whole nother conversation. So anyway, we started putting on these no preps, and we don't really know many people in this community. I know a few guys just because I did – would you agree it was kind of radio guys and then yeah. and then it was no prep and that was really separated back oh, at yeah, that very, point. Yeah. So Jeff is coming, he's got this awesome Novo and has gold wheels on it. That's his Furious Styles car. I absolutely love that car just because I love gold wheels. And I knew that me and Jeff would have a connection just because it's the color of the wheels <laughs> on his car. Um but I didn't know Jeff, and I knew that I, I just watched him drive. I knew he was a little bit half cocked all the time. That's probably a fair statement. <laughs> and uh, anyway, Jeff's there. The racetrack's already nervous because they had just get, gotten into the no prep stuff. It felt like every time we had an event, there was multiple people crashing just because it wasn't wasn't near as figured out as what it is now. And um, Jeff comes to the starting line. And he has no fire jacket on, right? And Jeff's just shaped like bull, you know? And, and I didn't know him well. And the starter is screaming at me. And all I could do is I could see Jeff in the car. And he's, Jeff, I mean, you're built, man. You know what I mean? And at that point, you were really working out a lot. So, like, he is ripped, bro. And he's in this Nova, no shirt on. And he's like, you're going to have to tell him he can't go down the track. And I heard the starter, I'm like, you tell me, you tell that guy that he can't go. Have you seen this dude's arms? And I said that he's like, okay, just let him go down, but tell him that next time he has to have a fire jacket on. So, and I think Brad would ever have told you that. Yeah, I think he did. Yeah. Actually, yeah. <laughs> but that was my first introduction to Jeff Thomas. And, uh, <laughs> and I'm like, like, yeah, man, you not, tell. Not a very good example for kids, I well, guess, or for young guys. Well, I will say you've definitely stepped up your safety program yeah, over the years. But. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I've also not the safest sometimes, but for the most part, we probably try to do a better job now. Yeah, yeah that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. But the, I love, like, that story really exemplifies you and who you are, I think. Like, just ready to rip at any time. Yeah, that's probably accurate. Spraying <laughs> a bunch of nitrous. Like, that thing always rode a huge wheelie. You always, uh, you know, we're, we're always the showman. 
Uh, and then after I really got to know you and figured out your background, like everything clicked for like why you are the way you are. And man, you're just a joy to be around. So, um, well, thanks. Appreciate that. No, I love our friendship. <laughs> it's great. Um, so before we get into all that, like, uh, why do you drag race? What, how did that even happen? Huh? That's kind of an interesting question. Well, um, before we get into the motorcycle stuff, cause I'll sure you ask that, but my dad was always into cars and he drag raced, bracket raced and stuff. And, uh, and I was always into cars from, I mean, I drove a 55 Chevy in high school. My first car was a, well, my first car was a 73 Z28, but that's sweet. Yeah. So for the, and then, uh, and then after that, I love 55. So I drove a 55 my last two years in high school. So I was always into cars and, and from the time of high school all the way until I started drag racing, which was probably eight years ago, I'm guessing seven or eight years ago. Um, I always had hot rods, you know I mean? I've had a bunch of 47 through 53 Chevy trucks and Chevy twos and, you know, just always had some kind of hot rod, you know, of some kind, you know? And, um, and then when the motorcycle career was, I feel like I had, they say cats have nine lives. I feel like I had about 900, you know what I mean? And I had probably pushed that to the point where I was burnt, man, on the traveling, you know, from one coast to the other and Europe and, and, uh, you know, it was just time to get out. You know what I mean? Like, you know, a good solid 20 some years of professional racing for, you know, for, a for part of my living, you yeah. know what I mean? Even just the stress that comes along with that, you know what I mean? Like, you. You're in California, and it's like I got to make some money. You know, yeah. this is this is this is no longer just a hobby. I mean, and it was. I loved it. You know, but but um, I just you know everything runs its course, and it was just time to move on to something different. And uh, actually, a buddy of mine down in Tennessee called me one day and said, "Hey, why don't you fly down to Memphis for? Uh, they had a radio race down there. What was that?" Oh, it's an outlaw streetcar yeah, radio. That Tyler. Uh, yeah, Tyler Crosso did it. Yeah. yeah, I flew down there and watched that, and then a couple weeks later, I bought the '62 Falcon. That's Dang! How, that's so how you, 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 I didn't realize you got hooked because of the radio racing. That's cool. I went to a ra- the radio race <laughs> and watched, and then I was like, "Well, I guess I got to get one of those." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's how it started. That's cool. Well, and to kind of back up, I, I, I knew that we would get into that, but so before, obviously, and you guys all know this, but. Before Jeff did this, he was a professional hill climber. Mm-hmm. So, to, man, to have a motorcycle career where you, for 20 years, like, most people don't, like, do it that long, really. No, probably. No, not, um, no, no, probably not on the average. But, I mean, it's not like all 20 years of that was super successful. Yeah. I mean, the first three years is, you know, I don't really have any money. You know what I mean? And I was, uh, and, but I had a lot of, uh, uh, What's the word? I had a lot of energy to put into gumption. it. Yeah. I had a lot of gumption. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not a lot of money, but I had a, a lot, lot of go, do. Let's yeah. go get her done, right? <laughs> yeah. And I built a lot of really, really weird stuff that nobody else ever had. You know what I mean? And uh and blew up a ton of stuff and but in the third year of it, we we got it figured out. And then we had a really, really good probably fifteen years, you know. Yeah. Um you know, basically running at the front of the pack, if not winning, you know. So um, it was hard to stop racing at the peak of it because it financially was good and we were winning all the time, you know. So, but then, you know, by the time I got in my 40s, um, you know, well, really about in my mid 40s, really when it basically, you know, kind of stopped, uh, you know, I mean, I had had quite a few injuries and, and uh, it was just, I don't know, man, I, you just know sometimes, you know what I'm saying? And I, it wasn't that the, I didn't have the love for the sport anymore. It definitely wasn't that. It was just, I wanted to do something different. Yeah. You know? I just wanted to do something different. I didn't know, even at the time, I didn't know what that was. So, you know. That's cool. Well, that, like, with the, like, I have a motocross background. So, like. Oh, I raced everything. I raced motocross, hair scrambles, flat track. I mean, I've raced nitro Harley drag bike. <laughs> I mean, so I've ra- you name it, I've been on a speedway bike. I mean, I've speedway done speedway bikes are so oh, rad. They're rad, yeah. I mean, I would love. I don't know if you've ever seen over in Europe and stuff how huge it is. Oh, speedway's huge. Over I mean, there, they have yeah. over hundred thousand fans at Wembley Stadium in yeah. in Great Britain, and uh, but those tracks over there, they they race on a half mile. I mean, 
Yeah, that's a big set of business. nuts. Yeah. yeah, big set of nuts. Yeah, yeah. I never raced on that. I mean, I raced on a small speedway track, but I've ice raced. I mean, I've literally, I think I did just about every kind of motorcycle race in there. That's was, really you know? cool, man. Yeah. yeah, I feel like a quitter because oh. I, I, I like, I stopped racing when I was like twenty two or twenty three, and I'm like, man, I, I'm tired of getting hurt. Like I. So you definitely made it a lot longer than I did. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and you know, the funny thing is, it, when you look back on when I look back on it, or I don't know how many people have said this to me from the motorcycle racing world, it's it's unbelievable the amount of crashes I took to not have more serious. I mean, I had a couple broken shoulders, a really bad left foot and ankle injury one time, and, um, you know, I mean— Multiple concussions and you know well, that's stuff pretty like mild, that. really. Yeah, considering the I mean, never the got a knee. You know, never broke an arm, broke a wrist one time, broke fingers. But I mean, you know, I mean, I have hill climbing is very, very. I mean, I literally have probably four buddies who have lifelong disabilities from it. You know, what I mean, yeah. like serious injuries. So, I mean, it's not. You know, and when I was young on those things, I'm very probably very lucky because I was wild. I mean, I think I told you that before, which I always think that's was cool. You know, my dad used to love that, you know, is that, you know, I would convince myself I could do whatever I was doing, you know, so it didn't really matter what everybody else thought, how stupid it was. Yeah, I was a I was one hundred and twenty percent confident I was going to be able to do whatever I thought I was, I, even if I couldn't, even yeah. if it wasn't possible. You know what I mean? And I really think that's why I was successful. You know, well, and I look at you now, like like in a car, and um, and I think this is where our story parallels a little bit. It's like, man, you're really calm in a car. Mm -hmm. You know, where it's like, even if the surface looks like whatever, I mean, that ain't nothing compared to hanging off a nitro Harley yeah. going up a hill. <laughs> I just, just thought, you know? all that chromoly cage around. Yeah, yeah, I feel really safe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, you know, fun. You'll know this guy. You know Jeremy McGrath. So yeah. Jeremy McGrath hill climbed. We yeah, actually raced that. each yeah. other in in Montana, right? And um, and Jeremy McGrath said the said like the mere thing I said, and I was like, "WTF, really?" He's like, you know, I'm gonna. He's like, I, I like on a, on a supercross track. He's like, every lap I pick the line for the next lap as the track track changes, and I I'm I'm pot committed. I'm hitting. You know, that part of that triple, I'm hitting it on the far right side. I'm, yeah. I'm going away from the left. It's getting too rutted or whatever, you know. And and he said, uh, and I always know I'm gonna it's gonna I'm gonna do exactly what I say I'm gonna do. You know what I mean? And that confidence is what carries you through to to do it. You know what I mean? When you second guess yourself and in these drag cars, I think that's even bigger. You know what I mean? Like, oh, absolutely. You know, you you have to uh stay calm and you have to use your head. Or you can tear some stuff up quick. Well, and you don't have time to think, you know. And I think that's what I think that's what motorcycles really teach you is like, yeah, it becomes you become so one with what whatever you're riding, and you have to make such fast decisions yeah. that it trains your brain to work really fast. Yeah, the big difference is the consequences with motorcycles are immediate. Yeah, you know, I mean, you can you can tear up a lot of cars and and maybe have a couple of bruises. You know, not not that it's not dangerous and you can't get hurt, but you know what I'm saying, like, yeah. The well, the financial risk that's so it's you know, horrible, yeah. Yeah, on the on the car side of stuff mm -hmm. is way worse. Yeah, yeah, very, very, and and you know, and sometimes it's out of your control and it's not your fault. And I don't know, it all sucks when that happens. I've been there a couple times. So. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, it's it's a, uh, it is what it is. I mean, everybody, you know, everybody does things the way they do them, and a lot of people do things different and still have success, but. um Heck, I'm still learning. I'm I'm an, I'm kind of a newbie at this, you know. Just, uh, but we work, we work at it seven days a week. So yeah, you work really hard at you it. You know, we're we're we we've gotten we get better all the time and learn stuff and and uh, but you know the the game is stepping up. I'm, I watched your uh, I watched your one with uh, Turbo John. You guys were talking about that, you know, and and uh, you know at, at the end of the day, that whole scenario to me is just the re the the real the real hardcore guys. They know they're just going to step their game up. That's all there is to it. They're going to do what they got to do, compete. You know, it's not in their, it's not in their genetics to step down. Yeah, you, you know what I'm saying. And uh, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong because people have legitimate reasons why they can't afford to do this, or you know what I'm saying. Yeah, why, they have a life. They have families. They have this and that. You know, so I'm not, I'm not talking down on that in any way, shape, or form. But the majority of the hardcore racers 
or, you know, they're going to buy that pro charger and skip a house payment or two if they got to. I mean, that's just, that's yeah. how it is. You know? yeah, yeah, you're not wrong. I mean, it's one of the best parts about being in the racing industry. You know, racers are the hardest workers, right? And the most irresponsible with their money. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, it's true. I used to be that way. I was that guy. You know what I mean? I was, I was the guy that bought a drum of nitromethane and didn't make my house payment. You know what I mean? Because... I couldn't race if I didn't have the drum of nitro. Yeah, you could race without a house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you know, but um, the thing about racers is that they, they do what they got to do to get what they got to get. You yeah. know what I mean? Uh, and whether that's the right equipment to be competitive or maybe the following week it is make an extra money to make that house payment. You know what I'm saying? And uh, which is great in the racing industry because when the economy gets bad, I feel like we're the last people to get hit, you know? Um, no, I agree. It's because it is. It's such an addiction and it's, it's your yeah. life. Yeah, I mean, I, I I say this all the time. Uh, you know, I I wouldn't know what to do if there wasn't some kind of race to look forward to. I've been it's been like that since 1976 for me. You know what I mean? So, you know, it just wouldn't be normal. You, know? <laughs> you wouldn't know what to do. I wouldn't know what to do. <laughs> I, you could really do some damage with some golf clubs. You know, <laughs> I think golf is not for you, Jeff. My bro- you know, Jeremy's big into golf now. My brother and uh, and he still you know he still loves going racing and stuff. But I mean, if, if there's if he can get, if he can physically get to the golf course, he's there every day. So, I mean, it, it's each his own for everybody, but for me, it's just always been racing. And I see some, you know, if you got into that, there would definitely be some, <clears throat> some wadded up golf carts in the future. Of yeah. Wherever you broken, chose to go. I, I do. I have played. I, my old uh, shop and house used to be right next to a golf course. So we used to play quite a bit. And, you know, I was the guy that can go four holes in a row par in it. And then the next four holes, I can't even hit the fairway. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. And then that's, that's two broken golf clubs and nine beers later, I'm <laughs> reevaluating this whole golf career you know, real quick. <laughs> that's funny. So, all right. So, uh, you go to, you go to the streetcar takeover thing, you go and buy a car. Was that the, was that the Nova or what are you bought? You said you bought your Falcon. The Falcon. Yeah. was the first one. Yep. And then you started racing pretty much immediately. Or? Uh, well, when I bought it, it was uh, it was um, it was really like, I mean, it had a pump gas. What was that thing? I don't even remember what cubic inch, like a four hundred eight Windsor small block Ford in it, you know. And uh, it was kind of weird. The car had ladder bar mounts on the rear end housing, but was on leaf springs, so it had everything there to put ladder bars on it, but they weren't. And uh, um, you know, and, and we put a cage in it and yeah, we, I actually, they used to have like a, a we uh, twice a month or once a month radio race up at Muncie, Indiana. Yeah. So we would, we were racing that and, uh, trying to figure out what we were doing. And then I immediately took the small block Ford out and put a big block Chevy in it. And gotcha. then it just started progressing. And then we really rebuilt the car and had a nice motor in it and painted it and everything and went to kill care to test and it had like the factory clamp on the firewall for the throttle linkage and the bolt broke and the throttle stuck on the very first pass after getting the car down and hit the wall oh, at like man. 160 mile an hour and tore the whole front end off of it well a couple weeks i think it was a little bit less than two weeks like 12 days later was the first war in the woods that nick and them put on Okay, yeah. which was like a last second deal, you know what I mean? Like uh, during streetcar takeover in Indy, and uh, I and that was at Brown County, right? That was at Brown County, yeah. And uh, I went home from Kill Care and unloaded the car and never even went in the house. And we we cut the whole frame. I cut the whole car apart all the way to the back half. And twelve days later, we had the car completely rebuilt and at the first war in the woods. Is that so? That first war in the woods for you, and probably a lot of people don't know that that Nick was the yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I guess we could call Nicky Bobby the founding father. Yeah, he is. I mean, I, when we when we started doing it, I called Nick and said, "You mind if I use the name more in the woods?" That's that was all Nick, not me for sure. But it, it, Nick's really good at stuff like that. He is you know really I mean? good. I mean, there there couldn't. I've thought about that a lot of times. There couldn't be a better name for it. Yeah, <laughs> you, you can sit around and think about it for the next ten years. You won't come up with something better. So, well, props the, to Nick. <laughs> well, the cool thing that I love about Nick, like. Uh, just a little offshoot, like, cause he is so humble, you know, he, yeah. he's never, he's probably hardly ever told that story to anyone that like out in the no, world, right? Not. That, you know, he doesn't care. He's no. Like, eh. <laughs> no, he's like you and me. I mean, you know, we, we all just want to see racing go on, you know what I mean? And, 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 uh, 
and everybody benefit from it, tracks, racers, family, you know, that's the whole thing. And I, and I, that's one thing kind of off the subject, but I want, I do want to say is I wish that, uh, and I'm not pointing the finger at anybody, but just in general, like promoters, they all need to realize something that put some effort into your job. Racetracks have to make money to keep the gates open. You yeah. know what I mean? If if you, you know, if you're putting a a half ass hundred dollar buy in hat race on that's got one Facebook post and you get forty three fans come through the gate, you're not helping racetracks, you know? Yeah. And your grandkids may not have a place to race at some point. You know, so you know, I mean it's really easy for people to always I hate it when people throw out there, well, you know, we just want to race. We're just trying to get a place for the locals to have a race and stuff. Well, you know, racetracks are businesses. Businesses have got to at least not lose money, you know, to Well, I will say on the hill climb side of stuff like when I – so me and Jeff last year, I, I had always wanted to go to a hill climb. I just never made time to do it. So Jeff, being Jeff, he's like – he called me. He's like, I have our tickets. I'm picking you up at this time. Like this is where you're meeting me. We're going to this hill climb. We went to Devil's Staircase. And once I went there, went there it really like finished – uh, summing up your life to me, and uh, and like the fans were unbelievable. Like I felt like I was at War in the Woods. Yeah, right. It really yeah. did. And I thought the thing that was so unique, which there's probably not a great way to do it, drag racing, but it was really cool that however many people came through the gate, that's how that's how the purse was. Yeah. So like the the riders got basically a percentage of the purse, which was such percentage a, of the gate, a percentage of the gate. Yeah. Uh, which was such a unique thing. So it's uh, been like that forever too. So, but you've always understood the importance of we need spectators to pay for this. Yeah. Which, oh, yeah. I, which I think a lot of promoters like they don't. Th- to your point, they just want to put on a drag race yeah. for their buddies, which is fine. Yeah, but, I'm not hating on it either. But but it's like if you want to do something more, you have to include the spectator. You know. So and to get the spectators, you got to be you got to be weary of what your show is. You know what I mean? Which like anything else, you know you. Uh, you gotta you gotta give the spectators what they want to see. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So you know your your class. You know, like just my opinion. I and I, once again, I'm not hating. I don't think anybody wants to see a bunch of stock Mustangs, you know, late model. You know, what I'm you know what I'm saying. I, I get it. There's guys out there that want to race those. Just some of these bigger events. I just don't think that's the place for them. You know, they I need mean, nitro bikes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nitro hook on that. Yeah, I mean, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I, like I don't want to not see those guys get a chance to race, but, you know, I just think you need to have more events. And I, don't, I hate saying like War in the Woods because that makes me look, you know, I, I don't mean it like that. There's other races that are great, you know, but um, it's just, it's an integral part of keeping this whole thing going. Yeah, at absolutely. the end of the day, you know, I mean, and if people, a lot of, I think a lot of guys would even argue that point or don't realize it, you know, for whatever reason, but yeah, it's a fact. <laughs> no, I agree with you. Well, so like, let's go back to you. So the you go, you go to the first war of the woods. You probably you hadn't ran any no prep before then, or was that the first? No, day? we had it by that point. You know, like what we were running the car like on radio some, and then I was like, you know. And it, actually, to start with, I wanted to do like a drag and drive, believe it or not, when I first did it. So, like, the first big block was on E85, and you know what I mean? And and uh, that's what we wanted to do. But, you know, I just – I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I had to get out there and see what was going on. And and you know what? I'm, I'm probably not even going to remember now, to be honest. I don't know when – Maybe it was Nick and them's first back of the track races at Muncie. I don't even remember, to be honest with you. I went to something like that, and I was like, this is me. Yeah, you know what I mean, this feels and right. This is this is what I need to be doing because two things. Like, I had went to the radio races, and it reeked of money, you know. And don't get me wrong. I'm a big proponent of this, too. Since the first motorized race in history happened, it was dictated by money somewhat, people. Okay? Yeah, and it's yeah. never going to change. Yeah, I can't. Yeah. Okay? It's not ever going to change. You know what I mean? Accept that before you decide to do this. You know what I mean? Whether it's small tire, no prep, or radio racing, you know, whatever it is. I mean— you know, money is a big part of it, you know, and uh, um, but I was like, man, it really wasn't even the money for me, like the radio race and the thing I couldn't do, which I think I heard you touch on before is I can't go to a race for a week. I mean, even and not when I was working for somebody else or when I had my own business, I can't be gone from the shop for a week. Yeah, I, mean, I just can't. You Consistently, know what I mean? yeah, no. it doesn't work. I mean, I can't show up to South Georgia 
the Thursday, the week before the race is happening the next <laughs> week. I mean, that's just crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, you know, and I love radio racing. I'm, I mean, a lot of people would be like, oh, Jeff hates radio. I, I don't really like Donald Long at all. I mean, I have no problem saying that, but I don't dislike radio racing. Yeah. You know? um, but, you know, so I said, that's that doesn't really seem feasible for me. You know what I mean? Like, at the time, I was like, you know, I can probably build me an X275 car, but I don't think I could keep up with the constant change to the rules, the amount of testing it takes to be, you know what I mean? The time to be testing at a track for a week prior to an event. You know what I mean? Why well, your I, testing window gets so small because, like, you know, when you're no prep racing, you can go – Friday night test and tune and, and test your deal on slicks. But mm -hmm. when you're radio racing, you have to go to a track oh, yeah. that's prepared to do that because you can't, like, you're not learning anything turning the car down. Yeah. So, yeah, to your and point. And I loved off the trailer. And yeah. I, I knew just from the very first time I went to one of those, I was like, this is way more than money and, and parts. This is who can figure it out, you know, who, you know, and, and, uh, that really appealed to me and, and, uh, and it was fun, and then street. We, you know, we got into the street racing was really banging for a while there. You know, what I, you know what I mean. And and um, and it was a lot of fun, and and uh, and we were doing good. You know, that was the other. I mean, I, who doesn't like racing when you're doing good, right? You know, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I mean, you know, like you said, the old Nova, the car was just the car was just phenomenal. It worked so good, it was just it's not even fair, really. You know what I mean for. Where did you buy that car after? Uh, I bought. I found that car on Turbo Bullet, and it was in Maryland. I paid nine thousand dollars for that car. I mean, <laughs> what a deal! Yeah, the car. It was an old. I mean, it was a square tube chat. I mean, it was like one of those Alston kits, probably. You know what I mean? That you build, and it. You know, it had a junk twelve bolt in it, but but it had all the bones to make the kind of car that you want to make. You know what I mean? Like it already had full aluminum interior and big tubs and fiberglass front end and fiberglass doors. And, you know, and we cut the front suspension off and, you know, just did a bunch of little things to it and moved the motor way back and, and built a new rear end. And it was a ladder bar car, which I love ladder bars. I don't know why, but they always work good for me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and, uh, and, uh, that car really just, it, it was it was just crazy. I mean, I'm a dummy for not putting it right back together. I mean, I, it is. The chassis is done, but um, just because it works so good, you know? Yeah, that's cool. No, I did. I love that car. It just, it it, it really fits you. you yeah, know? I mean, I'll never forget. Like, this is a cool story. That a lot of, and there was a lot of people. There was quite a few people there that saw it. But the first time we took the Nova to a street race, it was in Kentucky. And it was the worst road you've ever seen in your life. And it was pitch black. And it was like 35 degrees out. And the road was so narrow, the guy on the flashlight had to go in the ditch to turn the light on. He couldn't even be in between the cars. And I, and me and Hong drew each other second pair down. And I went up there. Well, I had the static timing too low, and the car wouldn't do a burnout. I mean, it did it yeah, just, just enough where they wouldn't let me do it again, right? Yeah. And we were second pair down a bare road. And I pulled up the line, and I'm thinking in my head, this thing's going to knock the tires off. Didn't even do a burnout, you know? right down beat hong and uh it was just crazy you know i mean like a car shouldn't do that you know yeah <laughs> and yeah that was it was an unfortunate thing to wreck that car and we still don't even know why that happened but stuff happens you know wrecked it on the at the big street race in oklahoma yeah that uh Hearts the legal won. the legal yeah. Deal, yeah 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 man that's tough yeah mm -hmm. it was kind of a funny funny side story on that that you'll get a real kick out of so the car was on a wheelie like always, right? Yeah, yeah. And, but not bad, maybe four feet high or something like that. I shifted it on the wheelie. It sat down like butter, and it immediately turned right. I thought it broke an axle. Um, anyway, so there's curbs on that road. So I was in the left lane. I crossed lanes, barely missed hitting. Um, what was what was that? What's his name? I forgot now. The guy with the little love truck that used to, was. I oh forget. yeah, I, I don't remember. I just either, forgot his yeah. name anyway. Barely missed clipping him. And cut the wheel hard to the right, and then the right rear wheel hit the curb, and it flipped the car. Well, I had 120 pounds of water softener salt in the trunk, and that covered the whole road. So I was kind of a real jerk. Yeah, they, yeah they you were, really screwed they, up everybody's they, day. Yeah, well, not it wasn't that bad, but they're all like, well, I mean, it looked like a bunch of white marbles all over the, <laughs> all over the road, you know. But um, the other crazy thing about that car is it got stolen. Somebody yeah. was dumb enough to steal Jeff Thomas's car. They stole the trailer and the car. Yeah, yeah. It, you got it back. What within like uh, about twenty four hours? Twenty four hours later, we got it back. Yeah, 
Yeah, the that, guy's in prison that stole it. Well, that worked out. That was, <laughs> that was his 19th conviction for vehicle theft. Holy cow. And that was the first time he went to prison. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, don't mess with the drag racing community. No. They were out. <laughs> man, that was like viral on Facebook. Yeah. So many people helped that. They At one point, there was somebody on an overpass in Ohio that was saw old, him. It was, I think it was Bill Hodgkinson. It might have been, yeah, yeah. Saw him. And then they turned around and drove back to Indy. You know, they got caught on the north side of Indy, so maybe 30 minutes from... Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. Well, it's all right. So, uh, man, you got great energy for this. This is perfect. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to come again. Um, so, we you started doing the no prep stuff. You're racing on your own. That's becoming successful. Um, so, let's go to War in the Woods. So, Nick did the first one, and then it kind of went dormant. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I, I I'd be lying if I knew exactly, but I'm gonna say it was a it was at least two, if not three years before we ran the the for our first war in the woods. So so Nick had kind of stepped back from it, and then I guess the track owner approached you, or how did that work? Yeah, yep. So um, her name was Sandy. That on the track, she's passed away since, but um, her son is Billy Fields, which is a yeah. good friend of mine. You know Billy, and um, and Billy I think called me one day and said, "Mom wants to sit down with you and and talk to you about." maybe putting on a race down the track. So we all went to lunch and we made a deal and, and, uh, Sandy, I love Sandy. Okay. And a lot of people would tell you the opposite of that. Billy will tell you the same thing. Right. Uh, but Sandy and I had a very, very, uh, agreed upon understanding of things. You get what I'm saying? And yeah. with that, that's just how things needed to be with, you know, things needed to be very structured. And then, both parties needed to keep their word about what they were doing, and and we did that, and and I think it was her biggest dream to see that track pack like it was, which was really really cool. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, so we did that, and then Sandy passed away, and then, um, you know, we ran the uh, Billy and and his uh, sister had the track, and then stuff happened with that, and the track got sold, and. Uh, which I don't know if this is appropriate time to say that, but yeah, might as well. This is a good time to say it actually. Yeah. So we, we we've purchased the track now. So oh, you did? Yeah. So to ensure that War in the Woods goes on forever. I didn't know that you did that. Yeah. yeah. Well, probably hardly anybody knows. That you Nobody did. knows. No. Man, that's awesome. Yeah. So I mean, the, the deal's uh, be final here in a couple of weeks, but we've already agreed. Well, on this it would and, be this is a, you know this will yeah. come out for a couple of weeks. Yeah. So. so yeah, that uh, and that that's not because so long story short, when Billy and his sister sold after her mom died, sold everything off. Right. Um, four guys bought it. Two of the guys that bought it, I I knew personally. Right. Uh, all older gentlemen, not really drag racers. Two of them weren't at all. And I think that they were just eating breakfast one morning and like, what are we going to spend some money on today? You know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. they bought a racetrack. <laughs> and then they were like, oh, shit, what are you doing? Yeah, we bought race a racetrack. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So then three of them were like, I want out of this. So one of them, which was a guy I know, Javi Mendoza, which is just an awesome guy, he bought the track. And he's had it for the last little year and a half, right? And uh, we're good we're good friends. And, you know, not it has nothing to do with that, just – you know how it is, man. Like, I mean, if you want to control your own destiny, you you need to not answer to anybody about yeah. what's going on. You know what I mean? And and uh, you know, I, my sister is really, really involved. She's really in a, good at in a that, huge yeah. part of the race. And like we've said this, me and my sister, like we'd be devastated if War in the Woods couldn't happen in yeah. spring. You know what I mean? I, whatever circumstances could cause that is just unacceptable. Yeah. You know what I mean? To me, you know, I mean, to build it up to where it is now, and that's really not even it. It's not really even money. It's not that. But, I mean, if you haven't raced at War in the Woods and you're a no-prep racer, you're missing the boat. It's like uh, I, I call it the the the, the no-prep Woodstock. Oh, it's just ins- – I mean, you know, I'm fortunate enough to have been in the finals twice down there. Right? I don't know how <laughs> it happened, right? And uh, I think Billy Hoskinson said this, which is true. You know, you're in the fourth, fifth, sixth round down there, and you're coming down and getting pushed down the return road. It doesn't get better. I mean, it's the best feeling ever. I mean, and, and it's really neat how the fans there really – they got their favorite drivers. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you can, you're getting pushed down and you're looking up in the woods up there. And there's this group of people that are all screaming and yelling for you. And the ones right next to them, 
don't even care who you are, right? Yeah. But then the next driver comes and the other people are cheering and it's just awesome, man. And the idea of something happening where we couldn't have it would just be crushing, you know what I mean? So Well, now I think it is like it it's a destination, you know, mm -hmm. and like man, that's one of the races that like like even like I came up for two hours, mm -hmm. yeah, like like last year, just because I wanted to be there for a couple hours. Yeah. I had other stuff I had to do, but I could sneak away for a couple, couple hours. hours. Yeah, and I just yeah, I'm with you, man. It's definitely it's a whole different deal, and like I think like it being down in that valley, like it it you know yeah, we'll give credit where credit's due. Nick nailed the name, like it fits oh, that a hundred percent. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, dude. I mean, I mean, it's probably seventy percent atmosphere. I mean, uh, but and some of that we created. I mean, Jamie Deer's the best oh, announcer he's, that's he's ever fantastic. grabbed the mic. Yeah, you know, a great friend of mine for years, all the way back in the hill climb days. And you know, you won't meet a better guy than Jamie, and he loves it. You know, same thing with Jamie. He said the same thing. I couldn't imagine what would we do if we couldn't do this twice a year. Yeah, I mean, I feel feel and empty. I think twice a year is a great number. You know, I think that really that's works on out. purpose, one hundred percent. You know, what I mean, like I don't want to, you know. I see some of these um, tracks or places that are having a no prep every single weekend, and they wonder why they're getting nine cars. You know what I mean? Like, you, they're running it in the ground. It doesn't – you know, we, we have one in the spring, and nothing makes them want the one in the fall more than making them wait for it. Yeah. You know, that's, that's how it is, you know. So um, – and, you know, the other thing, too, is from a financial aspect – as a promoter, you're way better doing it that way. You run less events with less overhead and do a better job promoting the two. You know yeah. what I mean? And and make your money on those those two days and uh, and and keep it going long term. You know what I mean? Like I, I I'm hoping I'm 54 years old. 20 years from now, I hope War in the Woods is the, on the same level it is today. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, that's cool. Yeah. And you know, not not and for money, money's great. You know, we worked hard at it. I I, I expect to make some money. You know what yeah. I mean? No. But but the idea of the longevity of it being like that is really awesome to me. You know well, what I, mean? I mean, if you do like you look at you do look at Donald Long's legacy of of lights out, no mercy. Like, there's a reason why that works, right? Yeah. The, the beginning and the end race, like yep. it, it, it just it works. And like, I mean, man, I think they're a. We were just down there. And we were that's fifth lights out, fifteen or sixteen. Oh you yeah, know? yeah. So like, oh, I mean, he's been ridiculous. You know, I'm just gonna say this: he's ridiculously successful. And he's somewhat of a genius. I don't know if I agree with the ethics of how he does it. You know what I'm saying? But that's not my business. Just not my cup of tea. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, you're not going to catch me dressing up like a clown to get interest in my event. You know what I mean? I'm I would a, love to see it. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you know, I mean, to each his hey, own. Now, now that you, we own the facility, uh, me and Rick, we got some ideas, some oh, things yeah, that we'd like to see happen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we'll talk yeah. after. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh Lord. <laughs> but, but I mean, he's, you know, yeah, he, they've knocked it out of the park, and you know, at the end of the day, it's because. Um, when it's not 100 degrees out, it's a killer show. Yeah, absolutely. It yeah. is. I mean, I, I told you, I'm a fan. I'm, yeah. not a, I'm not a hater. You know, I mean, if I was filthy rich, I'd have a Pro 275 car and be down there twice a year. Yeah, you know, yeah, I yeah. would, you know, I'm sure. But um, I think you're right, too. I mean, I'd, I'd be lying if I said that I didn't look at some of the stuff he did and apply that to War in the Woods. You know, yeah. don't fix things that ain't broken, you know. Uh, but, no, War in the Woods is just, man, it's... You know, I always tell people, and it's gotten so much easier. I, I mean, for all you promoters out there, think, remember that you you put the work in. There's a return on it later. It gets way easier. You you know, you get more efficient at everything it takes to put the event on. You know, if you take care of the people that are working there, they want to come back, and then you have your staff. You know, uh, you know, so it's gotten to the point now, especially I'd say the last, like the last race was just phenomenal. How good everything ran. You know, I mean. We were done by twelve thirty Friday and Saturday night. You know, completely. Done. Yeah, that's a feat. I that's mean, a feat. And well, and the facility. I mean, you just you and you're you are you have the hardest facility there is yeah, to manage. The, I mean, there's no other way to put yeah, it. Like it's, it's tough. Yeah, it's horrible. It's, it's horrible. Yeah, it's horrible. I mean, I'll be the first person to say. <laughs> it. Yeah, you own it now, so we can say, yeah, it's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, make sure you come to the race. This facility's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's also in my in my opinion, it's one of the greatest racetracks in the country. There isn't that that feel. Oh, it's race. got a vibe, man. It's, it, definitely it's got it. it. I mean, it, it really does. And I always say that, man. All, any of you guys out there, like War in the Woods, May thirty uh, first and June first, no car cap. Anybody can come race. 
Don't tell me your car is not fast enough. Come down there. It'll be the best $300 entry fee you ever spent in your life. Every person who's done that has told me that, you know? I, I mean. Well, because it is, I think, the thing that a lot of people miss is, like, in life, if we're putting on events, we're selling an experience. Yeah. Oh, a- absolutely. Yeah. And some people do come to, like, they're there to win, yeah. right? Like, they're very competitive. And some people aren't like that, which yeah, is fine. Fine, I agree. You, so you just come, you hang out, you, you set up camp, you watch it all happen. I mean, the people watching it's at Brown the, County it's worth admission, right? Oh, but you didn't. I mean, it's like it's like a county fair, a WWF <laughs> yeah. deal, and a rodeo, and then and then we went to a truck stop and bought all the apparel before we got there, all thrown into a oh, deal. God. You know what I mean? Like yeah. and maybe like like a Tupac concert yeah. or something. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the music's off the hook. Yeah, I, I don't mean, know. Yeah. And like, it's a it's an eclectic thing. Like it's almost I mean, it's, a social experiment. It's, <laughs> so, it's just so much fun. I know. You know what's funny is this. You'll you'll appreciate this. So usually every uh, Sunday after the event, right? Because we're done Saturday night, right? We're down there cleaning all day on Saturday, and then we usually there's usually a group of maybe fifteen of us that all are sitting down by my trailer, and the beer trailer's still there, and everybody's having a beer, and, it, and it's almost like, man, this was awesome, and it's like, this sucks that it's over, you know what I mean? Like, and then you know, I even me as, as not a you know spectator, I guess, going, geez, we got to wait all the way until next May to do this again, you know what I mean? Yeah, and. and uh, but that's that's part of what keeps it exciting and and what it is, you know. And and uh, I mean the, the the I mean I could tell stories about this forever. But I mean I've had I'll tell two stories. I'll do that real quick. Okay, I had a woman who was sixty some years old. I don't know exactly who reached called me and said, "Hey, what's the best cabin to get? It's me and my husband's fortieth wedding anniversary." And we're coming to War in the Woods for our wedding anniversary. Now, what other drag race can, no prep drag race can say that, right? <laughs> now, here's a crazy one from the last War in the Woods. So Josh Robinson came up to me and said, hey, Jeff, there, I was walking down off the sa- stage and said, there's a gentleman that needs to talk to you. I said, okay, no problem. Walked over there, met the guy, shook his hand. And he said, hey, um, I've been to the last two War in the Woods. We're from Canada. My uh, My daughter loves war in the woods more than anything in the world. And she was killed in a car accident a month ago. I came down to war in the woods and I wanted to get your permission to put her ashes down by the Creek on the finish line. You know what I'm saying? Wow. I mean, that's deep, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, so even me, the the guy that's, you know, for whatever now, six years has put a lot of time and effort into making this thing happen. Right. You don't truly understand how this touches some people. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's easy for people to have something negative to say. and But the amount of things like that that happen are just, they're unbelievable. I mean, you know, we have spectators from Germany, the UK, Australia. You know, the, uh, about a month ago, I had a guy hit me up on Messenger. There's a group of 21 guys from the UK flying over for the spring race to come spectate. Yeah. I mean, that's insane. <laughs> that it? is insane. That, that is the power of YouTube. Yeah, that's exactly what that is. You know what I mean? And uh, and I think it's awesome. And they and when they come, they you know, like we had the guys from uh, Australia and I met them at the gate, let them in for free, gave them shirts, the whole nine yards. Yeah, you, you know, want them to have a great oh, experience. And they 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 said they'll be back every time they can afford it. You know, twenty seven hundred dollar plane ticket. You yeah. know what I mean? That's crazy, man. Yeah, that des- that dude deserved to get the gate for yeah, free. Yeah, I mean, but isn't that crazy? I mean, I, it's hard to wrap your head around for me still, you know? So um, stuff like that, you know, you don't want something like that to stop. No, absolutely. I mean, I get a lot. I probably get just as much gratification out of that event every week, 52 weeks a year. I mean, I get messages every week, you know? There's people, I mean, probably this week, I bet I've had I've had a message Monday, Tuesday, and today about War in the Woods, you know? Yeah. You know? It's crazy. Did you ever think that you would do that? No, now that's interesting. There, there's a good one. So when I when we first decided to do this, I did it with my buddy John Molina. John Molina had a nitrous business. Yeah. He lived literally right down the street from my shop. One of my best friends. He died from COVID. John was an awesome guy. And uh, 
everybody loved John. Everybody that knew John loved him, right? I mean, it's easy to say that about people after they die, but it's really true in his case, you know? And it was actually like a really good partnership because John was pretty connected in the industry, and John was really good at doing that end. I really suck at it. You know, I, I guess I've gotten better because I have no choice. Yeah. You know what I mean? And the race has grown so much, luckily for us, that big companies like 10 Soldiers and Strange. I don't and, know if we're big, but yeah. We and Fuel Tech. <laughs> you know, the, the, the bigger companies want to be a part of the event. Yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? Which is which is awesome and, and helps in every which way. But that was kind of what John did. You know, and John was a much more organized person than me. And then, you know, John passed away. And then the the, the, the then my sister really stepped up. And, you know, it is a huge, huge help. So that was how it started. And when we first started it, we were kind of the, you know, I used to put on hill climb races. So I've promoted before. So I had some experience, I guess you could say, in promoting. But at the time, we were just like, man, the war in the woods that Nick did was awesome. I mean, how could this not work? You know, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And uh, like every other event, it's not like the first one was humongous. I want to say we had 31 cars or something, small tire cars at the first one, you know. And... um and then, you know, we had a blast. We had a really good time. And then we were, then we sat down. And we we're like, I think we can make this a big event. Yeah, I, guess, better, yeah. I think this can really turn into something, you know. And then we just tried to start doing a better job at getting sponsors and, and promoting and da-da-da-da-da. And, and, and that's what I mean. I, it's not, there's no mad. I mean, I got, I've got people from all over the country that call me all the time. Hey, would you come out to New Mexico and help us put on a no prep race? I'm like, guys. I'm no genius here. I'm not even college educated. You just need to put some effort in. That's yeah. really what it comes down to, you know, and uh, and you'll get results. Well, you know? I think you need to give yourself a little bit more credit. Like, like I think, um, you know, the hill climb background, dude, that's helped you so much because you, you've you've hit on it a couple of times. Like, like honestly, like two cars that go down the racetrack with no drama. And they go from point A to point B is relatively a boring thing. Like, you know, for 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 the radial stuff, there's a reason that at Lights Out No Mercy we have they have all those qualifiers because the the drama is the scoreboard. Yeah, right. Like yeah, they true. want that. We need that. You know, yeah, those big times, right? Is really what what we're chasing. And there's other things, you know, the rivalries, this, all that mm -hmm. stuff. But that a scoreboard is it. And like, you know, for War of the Woods, man, it is a tricky, tricky. Did I say tricky? <laughs> service surface, you know, that there's a lot of drama that can happen all the way down. And you know, any and and I think a lot of tracks too, like they they don't have that same vibe or that deal. Like you can't bring that to New Mexico, right. Or no, wherever no, no, they're no. asking no, you to right. go. Yeah. It's just, you know, and you, because we need, like we need that diciness to happen. Yeah. And you know that for hill climbing, like why do people come to a hill climb? Cause oh, they want to see if you can make it up or they really want to see what happens when you don't. Exactly. And yep. like, that's what or the woods is, is it's, Yep. Everyone knows it's tricky. But you know, the other thing too, I agree with you a thousand percent. The only thing I would add to that is this, the racing is phenomenal. Oh, it's really good. Racing, I mean, yeah. if they're, you know, if you've got 80 small tire cars, I mean, I would say over 80% of them are less than a half a car at the finish line. Yeah. I mean, it's really close racing, surprisingly. And that's the part that I think a lot of guys who haven't raced there don't get. You don't have to go 460 to go rounds at Brown County. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, But you, if you can go A to B every round and you can be consistent and chip away at it a little bit, uh, you'll be you'll be in there. I mean, it's I've seen it happen every single event. I mean, every single event. It's like you just said, it's tricky to get down. And, uh, you know, the really big horsepower stuff, It's it's easy to miss it. And and blow it, you know. Well, I think and I I, I uh, sometimes I don't know if I get off the left field thinking about stuff. But have you seen that that video of the of the drag race where they're going around the curve? Yeah, like I just in Brazil? saw that the other day. Yeah, I'm like, man, that's pretty interesting. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> like coming from a motorcycle background, you're like, man, why why do we have to go exactly straight all the time? Uh, right? yeah. yeah, I mean, like might throw some flavor in there. Oh yeah, and I think that is brown cutting. It's like, yeah. all right, well, you got a whoop section here, yeah, and then you got grass in the middle yeah. here. And then you got <laughs> I mean, that, that, I love that part of it though, honestly, because I feel like it kind of levels the playing field. You know what I'm saying? And you've seen it happen lots of times. You know what I mean? Like, for example, uh, everybody knows the Prestons and that Corvette are fast, right? But you got to put it together 
six rounds, yeah. seven rounds. You know what I mean? It's it's. I mean, they haven't done it yet, and that's, y'all that's a, have it one one. No, they? and that's a testament to yeah how difficult it is, in my opinion. You know what I mean? Like yeah, you know. Uh, now you take somebody like Ryan Mitchell. You know, um, I've always said this. I love Ryan. You know, he's an awesome guy and and a very smart guy too. He is, and, yeah, and uh, really gifted, but very very difficult to compete with somebody like Ryan who has that many hits in the same car and the amount of knowledge he has with his car, you know, not to mention he's won more in the woods three times, you know? So probably he has the most hits down the surface. Yeah. Well, for sure he does. I would say, you know what I mean? I mean, he's went more rounds at war in the woods than, than anybody. anybody. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's a very, 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 I didn't realize he's won it three times, three times. So that's, what's a bummer. He beat me in the finals at the last one. And Ryan had won twice, so if I could have won that one, we would have both won twice. But now he's 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 the only he's a three time winner, and then the other ones are all just one time winners. Wow! Yeah, so that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Why well, and he won it twice in the same year? Yeah, with two. Uh, well, right, because he won the spring and the fall. I can't even remember. Did he win the spring? I, I thought think, he won spring with the turbo combo, and then he, he probably won, did. You're right. I don't, and then I'm he won man. fall with. With uh, the Pro Charger. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he rolled into the fall War in the Woods with the blower on the car, and he told me he had – the transmission was redone with different gear sets, different cylinder heads on the motor, uh, I think a different gear drive ratio on the blower, and he had never made a hit in it and went out there and made a pass off the trailer. I mean, crazy, you know. So, I mean, that right there, you know. Yeah. That's a feat in itself, but um, yeah, he's really hard guy to beat down there, and and uh, but the the racing's phenomenal, man. I mean, I mean, if I I'm a I'm a fan too, right? And I love watching. You know, I don't yeah. get a chance to watch there as much as I would like to, but I I love it when I can. You know, well, I think, man, for you, this is just me to you. Like, I think, it, I hope, like next time you do the event, like take you two minutes. Yeah. And drive up on that hill. Oh, yeah. And watch it all happen. And, like, you know, because in life, man, like, we are, we're moment chasers. Oh, yeah. Like, that's what we're, I think that's part of the thing that we're built to do is chase moments. Yeah. And I think there's a really special place for people that, um, that provide moments. Yeah. So, like, you know, from the racing community to you, like, thank you. You know, like, it's. I appreciate that. You know, I had one of those moments and you'll think this is really cool. So at the spring war in the woods last year was our biggest event we've ever had. We were at capacity. Okay. I mean, I didn't know. You couldn't, you couldn't park another car on the property. Right. (laughs) So, um, I got beat first round in the Nova and, uh, I got in the second chance race. Well, um, it was so, chaotic so i have friends down in brown county and like a mile down the road i had a a couple acres of land where i could park more cars so i'm out parking cars i mean we are we're we're shuttling people you know in the beds of trucks (laughs) then i get a a bus another buddy of mine down there knows somebody that's got a bus we get the bus to shuttle people and I can't even get up there to make the, fir- the the call for first round of the second chance race, right? So literally, I haven't even been at the track for probably three hours on Saturday afternoon, right? And when I come back, it's like, I don't know, 4, 30, 5 o'clock, I'm guessing. And I walk down. I'm walking. I'm not even, <laughs> I don't even have a golf cart or done. I'm walking. And I get down there by the concession stand. Well, you know, the concession stand is the deck. I see a couple of uh, buddies of mine, older guys standing up there. And I walk up. I'm not really even paying attention. It was really weird. You know what I mean? Like, you would think you'd be looking at the track and, like, what's going on? And I walked up to the handrail and was saying hi to them. And I looked up, and it was, like, seven, eight people deep on the fence down both sides of the drag strip, all the way down to the end of the fence. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I couldn't even believe what I was seeing. That's what that's what I say all the time that people don't understand is it doesn't even sink in with me. I mean, it really doesn't. You know what I mean? Like, you, you're you looking at it, and it's just mind-blowing, you know? Uh, yeah. But it was cool. I mean, I, that's a moment I'll never, ever forget. That's when I, I think that was the moment where I was like, man, this thing became what we thought it could five yeah. years ago. You know what I'm saying? And it, and it really came to fruition, and that's like a win, right? Yeah. You know? I mean, that's pretty cool. So that was, uh, that was really neat, and... Uh, what are you gonna do if you keep growing it? What are you? I mean, <laughs> man. 
Uh, I don't know, but you know what I said the other day, which you guys will laugh hysterically at is I dare him to let me hit the lottery or something. Cause I would go in there and I would put, what do you call them? Sweets up in the woods all the way down with AC and, and their own personal bartender and food. I mean, I would do some some outrageous stuff. Some, you give me too much money, and you, you'll well, see. Well, I think, like, really sick cabins like that you could rent out would be tight. Oh, yeah. Now, you know what? Bill Monroe, so we made a deal with them, which is which is awesome. The guy that owns Bill Monroe Music Park, which is just to the north of the track. So this is the lifesaver, which I've had to work at this the whole time, right? So now I lease some property off an adjoining property to the track, and then they let me like use their land as a right of way and you can actually walk from the track to Bill Monroe, which has three hundred and fifty R V hookups. Oh, that's awesome. And I have ten more acres of land to park cars there. And then the people can walk from Bill Monroe through the woods and come in the back way into the track. So, you know, and you know the funny thing is, I mean, we've had a little over five thousand spectators, like fifty two hundred was our biggest one. Um Man, I don't even know. I mean, you're only going to be able to put so many people in there before they can't see the racing, you know? Yeah. And that's pro I'm guessing that's somewhere around 7,000 probably, you know? Uh, but I also think a lot of people come. I, I don't think it I, – I think you could have 10,000. I yeah. don't think they're going to be mad. They're going to be down there having fun and – well, and I think the more you get it figured out, like you just the the crowd control and figuring that stuff out, yeah. that's going to be your hardest battle. Oh, it's just well, I mean, lot. knock on wood, man, we've been very fortunate to not have a lot of problems. You know what I mean? I mean, that, we had a few little things, but nothing major. I mean, the you know, like everything else, ninety eight nine percent of the people are there to have fun. Yeah, you know, I mean, and not start trouble and be respectful of other people. You, but as the number grows. The percentage of idiots grows, yeah, and, and that equals problems. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and you got to be prepared to deal with those. You know what I mean? And and uh, and that's the not fun part of doing this, really. To be honest, you know what I mean? Uh, same thing with. The, I mean, honestly, it's the same thing with the racers. Ninety-eight yeah. percent of the racers are awesome, best people you ever meet in your life. There's going to be a two percent of them that want to fight with you for two hours about their parking spot. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Those are the negative sides to doing this that, that you know, really can wear you thin. You know yeah. what I mean? You try to be politically correct and, you know, and, and it wears you down for sure, you know? No, and I get that, man. It's, uh, well, I mean, I think people, and really we'll probably just keep talking about where I was going to talk about something else, but I think we'll just finish it out with this. It's just oh, whatever you want to talk about. <laughs> But people don't realize the amount of emotional toll it takes to put on an event and, like, how much of yourself you really pour out to get get through that. So, like, oh. it's, you know, and, you know, when you're – I've been on both sides of this coin, yeah. racing and promoting, and, like, you know, gosh, man, it's it's, it's a tough hat to wear sometimes. Well, I mean, it, you know, and it's it's pretty financially stressing – too. I mean, you know, it's it, it this ain't it don't cost fifteen hundred dollars to put this event on. It's a lot of money out of pocket and Mother Nature can put a hamper on that yeah, real you're quick. Just, you're just betting. You you're, know, you're gambling for sure. Um I mean it's worth it in my opinion, but uh I mean that's just part of it, like everything else. You know, I mean I, that doesn't really phase me at all anymore. You know, yeah. it, it is what it is and we just we just try to look at every last event and what was a problem or what we could do better. And we just try to improve it the next time. And, and, you know, then that's all you can do. Now there's certain things that do irritate me with cert with people that complain about stuff like Brown County is not Lucas oil raceway. Okay. It's not ever going to be okay. Yeah. It doesn't have bathrooms. It doesn't have permanent lighting. It has the only asphalt it's basically got is the track and <laughs> what, it what, sucks. Uh, yeah, which is that's quite <laughs> right? So uh, I mean, if you're real concerned about your car getting dusty cuz you're I mean, maybe it's not the place to come race. I mean, you know, <laughs> I mean I feel like you, everybody knows what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like I always use this as an example. If I don't like McDonald's, I don't walk through the front door and buy a hamburger. Yeah. It's that simple. I don't feel the need to to talk about it. You know what I'm you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like a rag on it or put it down. You know what I mean? Like it's it is what it is, you know? Dude, when we so the one time that we came, uh I'll I'll just I'll never forget the feeling. So <laughs> we we get there and man, we didn't know where we were going. We we literally had zero idea of what we were getting. You didn't into. even have a transmission in the car. No, <laughs> no, we had no idea, man. And like and like honestly, the reason we wanted to come is because I really liked you. Like you mm -hmm. already supported us. So I was like, 
you know, when you're finishing a car, you're like, I need a goal to get this thing done by. That was your goal. And that was our goal. So, like, Which we're cool. going. And and I told you we would be there, yep. so we were coming. And, I, dude, we burn the transmission up. We get there. <laughs> you know, we pull in at, like, 2 o'clock in the morning. Still got to put transmission in the car. Like, didn't know where to go. So, we just rolled down the hill, like, if I want to know what I know now, I don't think we would have rolled down that hill. But we didn't know what we were getting into. So we got like, you know, 38 foot motorhome, 32 foot trailer. We come down this cow path and then we just roll into whatever spot was available. Yeah. Well, thankfully there was something there because we couldn't have got out. Yeah. Like once we were in, we were in. Then we pull the car out at like two in the morning. The the space when you're at Brown County, what we rolled into, I thought it was flat because everything else is hilly. <laughs> But it's not. And like we're trying to put a transmission in this thing, and <laughs> yeah, it was such a mess. And then we get done, dude. At like, we probably finished getting the car ready at like five o'clock in the morning. Crawl back in the motorhome, get some sleep, and dude, at like eight a.m., you let the gates open, and I could just hear the. Yeah. Lord of the Woods enthusiasts coming down. The, it sounded like cows getting It's really, crazy, man. And we, we woke up to like a herd of people. And I'm like, I've slept like an hour. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 I mean, you know, we used to never start. We Just since, you know, we've had a way bigger car count, we start earlier now, right? And and uh, we don't start small tire until dark usually. But we start a little earlier. But we used to not start till 7 or 7.30, right? And I remember even before it got as huge as it did, you know, on on a Saturday at noon, there'd be 1,500 people in there. And we weren't racing for seven hours. Yeah. Everybody knows there's not a car going down the track for seven hours, and they're there at noon, you know? And, I mean, that tells you a lot. I mean, talk about enthusiasts. You know what I mean? (laughs) I I never went to spectate for something and showed up seven hours early. Well, I've never been on time for anything, so I guess I would never. that's fair, Jimmy. Yeah. (laughs) True. (laughs) That's funny. Well, all right. So just to kind of in conclusion, and when when did – so TRS, when you started – really working on cars and doing that how, how long into the drag racing did that start a couple of years or uh no we, we really just started that well this is our third year third okay. a little a little a little more now like probably two and a half years so the third year yeah and you know and and man to say blessed is an understatement we're you know i'm i'm older now and i don't really we talk about this stuff all the time i don't really want to expand i don't have that young energy you guys do and you're 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 like your shop and everything is is awesome but you know i like it's just me and dean i you know i like it i like it how it is i got to work a lot more hours we're crazy busy you know it's it's we've been very lucky and you know to have the customers we got and and it's awesome and uh I don't think I'm going to change it. I like how things are. and, and Probably uh, like having that personal touch, too. Yeah, to you know, and, and uh, you know, we always have a couple of cars in the shop of customers that we're working on or setting up or whatever, and and uh, we just keep plugging away at it, and and uh, it's fun. It's You know, it's fun. That's why. You know, like they say, you know, I don't, I don't want to go to a job I hate every day, and, you know, I mean, I'm not saying it's all fun, obviously. You know that as good as anybody, but... Um, it's been great, you know, and we're out there all the time, and we try really hard to take care of our customers and answer the phone and, you know, the, like, old school stuff that doesn't happen with a lot of businesses nowadays, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think that goes a long way. You yeah, know? it does, man. Absolutely. And, uh, so, you know, we do that, and the same same thing as you guys, too, like, you know, always trying to come up with an idea of something else to build and, yeah. and make and sell, and stuff like that's fun and, and uh you know, and, and just excited to go racing, excited to put races on. and Oh, I mean, you're one of the most passionate people just about racing that, I've you know, you love racing, yeah. which is – and you can see it all over your face yeah. and your body. I mean, it's just so cool that how much you really love the sport. Well, racing's been really good to me. I mean, you know what I'm saying when I look back on it. You know what I mean? I've been really lucky to, like, live a life where I was doing what I wanted to do all the time. You know, yeah. I think I told you that before. Like, back when I was young, I never, ever once said, well, I can't go to that race because I can't afford it or because of this. I figured out some way to do it. You know yeah. what I mean? One, I never, ever would consider the option of, well. Not going racing. <laughs> no. I mean, if, you know, I, you hear people do that all the time. Well, I can't afford that. 
Well, why didn't you think of 100 reasons why you could instead of one reason why you couldn't? You know, yeah. I mean, I would have gotten four jobs. <laughs> I mean, I literally, I mean, that's the truth. If that was the only way I could do it, I would have went and did it. You know what I mean? Yeah. If I could keep my eyes open, I would just work. You know what I mean? I, that's what you had to do. But that's just because, like you just said, the want to go racing is that bad. Yeah. And the funny thing is, it, it hasn't changed one bit. Since 1977, you know what I mean? Like, that's just who I am. You know, I mean, I'm not the greatest racer out there by any stretch of the imagination, you know? We we just, uh, but, you know, I live to line up with Ryan Mitchell or them guys or, you know, I mean, those are the, those are the, the moments, like you said, yeah. that make it all worth it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and maybe it's getting beat by this much by Ryan and thinking... Man, next time we're gonna have something for him. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it's that kind of stuff. That's the stuff that makes this so addicting and makes you, you know, like you said, and I understand this too. There and I respect it too. There's lots of guys who, you know, maybe because of life and kids and finances, like they can't, they're not gonna be able to be win, right? But maybe going to war in the woods and making it to third round is winning. You get what yeah. I'm saying? And and they're having a blast, and you can't. That's awesome. You know what I mean? That really is. If, if they're if they're having fun and they're satisfied with it, then good for them. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and maybe two years later, things change in life, and they can't, they do have the money to do it. You know what I mean? Uh, so, I mean, that's the part that's addicting and makes you, you know, I mean, like I said, I, I just, I can't even process what I would do if there wasn't some kind of a project going on or a race to go to. Yeah. I you, mean, like you said, I mean... I'm not going to say, okay, well, I'm joining the golf league. I mean, nothing wrong with that either, you know, but that ain't me. Well, and I think once it's bred into you, man, it's just, you know, I, you know, you can't, you, you can't take that out of you. No. You know, it just, it's once it's It's there. a way of life. There's yeah. no doubt, you know. I mean, you, can you imagine not being able to get up tomorrow and come in here and be 10 soldiers? No, it's, it'd be a. Well, now, like watching, like like my dad was in here today, and you know he's talking. You know, he's eighty one, yeah, you know, and he's talking, still talking about racing, yeah, you know, and then like seeing my little boy roll through here, and you know, it, just the generations of like, wow, like, yeah, we're still doing this, yeah, you know, oh yeah, it's awesome, man. That that is cool. I mean, my dad was the same thing. He was huge, you know, supportive of, of my racing and going, and you know what I'm saying, and so. Lots of cool moments throughout the years, things you can't replace. You know, and if you if you wouldn't have been there, you wouldn't have had it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like, like no different. You know, I mean, I, there's plenty of times I pulled into a racetrack with my trailer and car and probably knew I was way outgunned, but that didn't stop me from going. You yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? Absolutely. You, you have to go to get on that level, you know, and you just got to constantly step your game up and get better at what you're doing like everything else, you know? Absolutely. And, and it's fun for some, for some people they get too frustrated and they can't, you know, the, the, but for the guys that are successful, you have to, you got to struggle. It's just part of it. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so what's your closing thoughts, Jeff? What do you want to leave the world with? Oh man, I don't know. Uh, just, uh, I would never do things the way I do. <laughs> okay, you're you're gonna find that that's probably a pretty difficult route to go, but uh, um, do something. I always said that. You know what I mean? Like that's how I am. I'm probably gonna get a sawzall or a TIG torch, and I'm gonna tear into something when I probably should have sat there and thought about it for an hour first. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But if you're not doing something, you're not getting anywhere. You know, that's how I always look at things. You know what I mean? Like it, you, you gotta. I'm not one of them people. I'm pretty impatient. And I can't just sit around and talk about stuff. You know what I mean? Like I'm You're a, a doer. doer. Yeah, there Let's you go. Do it. <laughs> and if it's wrong, I'll cut it out and we'll do it again. I mean, like Dean that works with me in the shop, we we always kid at each other. Well, we just got that done on the second try. That's pretty awesome. You know what I mean? <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's like the fourth time you're redoing it is you're like, God, we are really, really idiots. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, so I, I wish I had, you know, um, like I've told you this before, what I always think is so cool and uh, and nobody appreciates it more than me, trust me, is like one of your guys' full built cars when it's done is the attention to detail is just phenomenal. You know what I mean? I've looked, you know, like at the carbon fiber interior and, 
you know, every piece fits perfect. Every gap is this, you know what I'm saying? And I, I really wish that I had that level of patience. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I, I, I can try, you know, I do when I want to, I can, you know what I mean? But that's a different kind of person, man. I, it's hard well, for me to wrap my head around it. Because your will to go race is more than, like, yeah. and I think like you have a real like good idea of like, you only have so much time. Yeah, yeah. And true. the next, and for you, that next race is always right here. Yeah. So, but it's be- it's 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 very satisfying to look at work like that. You know what you. I mean? And it's it's neat. You know, from I, I mean, I always have loved stuff like that. You know, and I do that too. You know, like my old fifty seven truck I built is, you know, is on a different level than some other stuff. You know, yeah. but uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's just all so much fun, and I hope it never ends. Yeah, the, that's that 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 really fits you, Jeff. Yep. You just hope it never ends. Well, uh, man, if you have it, you should make a priority to go to War of the Woods and see it. He has another race too this year. Gangsters Paradise is going to be uh, at Wagler Motorsports Park, so that's a different deal. He's doing the Purge No Prep there too. Yeah, that's uh, April twenty sixth and twenty seventh. And a shameless plug. You, you small tire guys that are invited to Gangster's Paradise, you want to be at the Purge. You should probably come to the Purge. That's yeah, yeah. going to be your only chance to make hits down that track, and the per, and the Gangster's Paradise is a lot of money. So um, I anticipate seeing one killer field of small tire cars at the Purge. And Waggler is just an awesome facility, and, and most people don't even know of it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, uh, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, to so, going. I mean, for all the people that's never been there, you'll be pleasantly surprised when you roll in there. And the owner of the track – Next level, He's really great good guy, guy. Yeah. you know. So, yeah, come support that. Not for me, for the track owner. You know, let's let's make another track successful. Yeah, and keep absolutely. And keep the gates open. You know, that's a that that that's a big part of it. I'm not stingy. You know, like me and Jeremy Wagler are good friends, and I told him the same thing. You know, I want to see him make some money. Yeah, let's work together because we great all. Race I mean, on. at the end of the day, man, th- that's kind of what makes some of this go around. It, do- so. it does. Yeah. yeah. No, don't fool yourself and say. Well, Bobby doesn't have that much money. We need to make a class for him to race in. That's not how you. That's not how this works, guys. You know, yeah. it sounds great in theory. That's just not really what makes it happen. You know, yep. uh, get out there, put on good races, put a show on, and and support the promoters that put the work in. You Absolutely. Know? Well, cool. Well, man, we appreciate you coming and hanging out with us. I can't wait to go grab dinner with you tonight <laughs> and hang out a little bit more. Uh, but if you have it. Make sure you go to all Jeff's stuff and like it, like uh, you know the War of the Woods page, his TRS racing, all that stuff. Um, make sure you go and support him because he does. He's a, if you can't tell by now that he loves the sport of drag racing, you've really missed the whole point of this thing. <laughs> so, and we will we'll have to have you again uh, for sure. So, uh, but as always, like, share, subscribe. We appreciate you. We'll see you next time. <laughs>